Hey everyone, welcome back to Sax Tuition on YouTube. My name's Jeremy. If you or someone you know is just about to start their saxophone journey, you might be a little bit mystified as to what you actually need to get started on this instrument. Because time and time again, I've seen people buying things they simply don't need, even things that can make their life harder on the saxophone, rather than just focusing on the essentials and the few things that can truly make life on the saxophone even easier and more enjoyable. So in this video, I've divided up practically all the saxophone gear you can buy into three different categories. The must-haves, the nice-to-haves, and the don't bother. Now, as you'll learn, I'm not into fancy gadgets and gear, and all of the things in this video are things that I can actually personally vouch for. And just as a reminder, I'm making these lists for someone who's just starting the saxophone. So if you're watching this video and it's sparking off even more questions for you, I've put a ton of links to other videos that can help you in the description down below, along with Amazon affiliate links to each of the products I mentioned in this video. So if you're looking to make your journey on the saxophone just that little bit easier, or you wanna buy a gift for a saxophone player that they can actually use, this is the video for you. But before we get into it, if you've got all the gear you need already and you just want to start learning the saxophone, check out lesson one of the Sax Tuition Beginner Series. It's got everything you need to get the instrument together, learn your first few songs and get a consistent sound. And you can watch it for free right here on YouTube. I've put a link in the description down below and on the end screen of this video. So. Let's get into it. Now, number one on the must have list is of course a working saxophone. And I say working because if you've just purchased a secondhand sax and there's no proof that it actually works, I strongly recommend taking it to a music shop or a local woodwind repairer to get them to look it over first and make sure everything's okay. There's nothing worse than a beginner trying in vain for weeks or months to play a simple song, not knowing that the reason they actually can't get their notes out is something completely beyond their control. Now, in terms of what saxophone you should actually start on, this is something I've covered in previous videos. But long story short, most beginners start on the alto saxophone, with tenor being a popular runner-up. For some people, soprano sax is the only instrument they want to learn, and whilst I support everyone on their saxophone journey, it is worth knowing that starting on soprano has some considerable challenges. Check out my soprano sax video for more information. And for the baritone, well, I love you guys. It's just that I still to this day have not known of anyone who's actually started their journey learning sax on the baritone. I suppose there just aren't that many Lisa Simpsons in the world after all. Now in terms of the brand of saxophone you should buy, well, here's three options for you. If you're looking for a brand new saxophone and you're willing to spend a little bit of money, you can't go past the Yamaha YAS280. On Amazon, it's selling for 1300 US dollars and this is a sax that you could quite easily keep for the rest of your life. You could play it professionally if you wanted to and being a Yamaha, it will always have name brand recognition and attract a decent resale price. The only downside, of course, is the price. At 1300 bucks, it's gonna be a tough sell for a lot of people just dipping their toes into the saxophone world for the first time. Now, if you'd consider a second hand horn, look out for the Yamaha YAS23 or the AS100. Despite the different model names and the fact it was even sold under the brand Vito for a time, these are actually just different model numbers for the same saxophone. And it's a truly legendary Japanese made sax at that. You can check out my full review of this sax on this channel, and with a pinch of luck, you can even find these saxes secondhand for 500 US dollars or less. Now, just quietly, my prediction is that these older Japanese-made Yamahas will pretty much hold their value from here on out. 
In fact, in good quality, they may even appreciate slightly in value over time as they gradually become more and more sought after. And finally, if you're looking to buy a brand new instrument, but you're only working to a budget of around 500 US dollars, I'd say pick yourself up a Jean-Paul AS400. Once again, you'll find a full review of this saxophone on this channel, but personally, I don't think there's any other saxophone you can buy brand new that can compete with it at that price point. It's well finished, it has a great sound, it plays in tune, and Jean Paul is an established brand based in the USA that has great customer support. So with a working sax out of the way, what's actually left on the must have list? Well, next it's vital that you have a mouthpiece, a ligature and a neck strap. Now, don't worry too much, any brand new saxophone that you buy will include all of those things as a default. I'm only putting them on this list just in case you happen to stumble across a secondhand sax that's not quite complete. Now, next up on this list, we've got a cleaning swab, also known as a pull through cloth and a polishing cloth. And I've put these on the must have list because quite frankly, not having these is just a little bit gross. Each time you finish playing the saxophone, particularly if it's going back in your case, it's important to get your cleaning swab and pull it through the body of the saxophone. That'll take out any excess moisture inside the instrument and help stop the sax from going moldy and gross. And if you want any more reasons to clean your sax, well, just Google the term saxophone lung. And finally, on the must have list are reeds. For an adult beginner, I recommend Diodario Royal or Van Doren Traditional Strength 2 reeds. And for a child, I recommend starting on a slightly softer 1.5 strength. Now, if you bought a sax online and they gave you a strange box of reeds that came in the case, I'm just gonna say, don't bother with them. Go out and buy yourself some Diodarios or some Van Dorens instead. Well, that is it from the must have list. Next up, we've got our nice to haves. These are the things that can truly aid us on the sax or even enhance our playing experience. And first on this list is a metronome and a tuner. Now these very nearly made the must haves list because although you don't technically need them to get started on the saxophone, they're just two items that every musician, regardless of their instrument, should actually own. As far as physical units go, I like the Korg TM60. These generally go for around 30 to 40 US dollars online and it combines the tuner and metronome functions all in one device. These Korg units can generally be tossed around a bit and still work flawlessly decades later. Now it should be said that you don't have to go with a physical unit like the Korg. There are apps which you can download to your device that do the same job. On the tuner side of things, I like ClearTune. It sells for $4 on the App Store and is still the best visual representation of pitch that I've ever seen, with both the standard tuner display for fine adjustments and the overall tone wheel display to see where you are relative to the notes above and below yours. You can even go into the settings and adjust the transposition to account for the saxophone that you're playing, E flat for alto and barry saxes and B flat for tenor and soprano saxophones. As for metronomes, the one I personally use is called Metro Timer and it's free on the App Store. It allows you to change the tone of the click, tap the tempo, and if you get advanced enough that you wanna pay for additional features, it allows you to use odd time signatures and set up custom accents and subdivisions. Overall, I think the value of using a physical metronome is that it's a little less distracting than using your phone to open apps, particularly when you're right in the zone for practice. But ultimately, you can achieve the same results with whichever path you choose. Next on the nice to haves is what I'd say is a nice neck strap or harness. Most commonly, if you're buying a saxophone brand new, regardless of whether it's a Jean Paul or even a more expensive sax like a Yamaha or even a Selma, it will come with a fairly basic neck strap with limited or even no padding. And for a lot of people, that's absolutely fine. There won't be any discomfort whatsoever with using a neck strap like that. 
But if you're into long playing sessions or you have any neck or back issues, you'll most likely want to upgrade to a more comfortable neck strap. So here are my three main recommendations. For a padded strap that offers the next level of comfort over just a plain strap, I recommend the Neotech Soft Sack Strap. This is quite a form-fitting strap that distributes the weight quite evenly across the back and the shoulders. And for around 23 US dollars, it offers a great mix of comfort and value. For a more premium neck strap that is especially good at directing the weight of the sacks off the neck, I like the Sabula neck strap. I've used this particular strap on the tennis sacks for years. And you can see from the design that there's a deliberate gap in the padding where the neck vertebra are. And that helps to improve blood flow and reduce fatigue while playing. Now at around 80 US dollars, they're certainly not cheap, but they are exceptionally well made and really do make a big difference if you play a larger sax or are playing for long sessions. And finally, if you're looking for a harness that directs all of the weight of the sax away from the neck, the Sax Holder by Jazz Lab really is the best product on the market. This design gently distributes the weight of the sax between your shoulder blades and your abdomen. And although even folded up, it'll most likely be a bit too big for your sax case. It's really an ingenious product that spawned a lot of copycat designs online. I recommend buying the original Sax Holder or the slightly updated Sax Holder Pro. Moving on, number three on the nice to have lists is a reed case. Now a reed case can really help you organize your reeds into a basic system, extend their life and save a bit of mess in your case. For more information about this, you can check out my video on developing a reed system in the link below. But in terms of the case, I just recommend buying a simple Rico reed guard, which you can pick up for under 10 dollars. And sharing the final position on the nice to haves list are stands, both a music stand and a sax stand. As far as music stands go, I don't have a strong opinion on brand other than I always go for stands with a solid back. The wiry stands that fold out always seem to lose their shape after a while and they're just a lot more frustrating to put books on. So for the sake of this video, I've linked to an Amazon basic stand that you could pick up for around 30 US dollars. It has a solid back and it seems to have a lot of positive reviews. Now on the sax stand side of things, my strong recommendation is to go for the Hercules sax stand. A sax stand is the best way to store your saxophone other than putting it in the case as the stand makes sure there's no weight placed on the keys or the rods, unlike resting it on a table. Now, I've never been approached by Hercules to review any of their gear, but I have to say I am a fan of their products because everything I own of theirs is really well built and super durable. Well, that rounds it out for me for the nice to have. So that means last and definitely least is the don't bother list. So here is my quick roundup of the gear to stay well away from. First on this list is the sax mute. Why? Because despite what they tell you on their product pages, almost none of them actually work. The only type of sax mute that does work are the giant cases with armholes that fit over your whole instrument. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there like me who share a common wall with their neighbors or live in an apartment building. And for those people, the volume of the sax can be a real concern. Unfortunately though, I just don't think sax mutes are the solution. A better solution might be to find a time of the day to practice that doesn't annoy your neighbors, practicing in a more insulated room in the house or failing all of that, just practicing outside. In the early stages of playing the sax, it's not supposed to sound spectacular, but you should be able to hear and feel Feel the vibrations of the horn, which will allow you to make those adjustments to your technique to get a better sound. Unfortunately, it's hard to do that if you surround your sax with a padded box. Next on the don't bother list is a fancy mouthpiece and ligature. If you've seen or heard any of the sax reviews I've done before, you'll know I always like to test the saxes with a couple of different mouthpieces. And I usually always include the one that comes in the box. And do you know what? Even with the cheap beginner mouthpieces, I still sound like myself. 
It's not to say that there isn't gains to be made from moving to a more premium mouthpiece down the track, but when you're in the first year of playing, you really shouldn't be worrying about what equipment you're playing on. Just focus on the basics first. If you want a great all-round mouthpiece to start on, pick yourself up a Yamaha 4C. You can get them for around $40. They sound great, are easy to play on, and will easily carry you through the first year or two of playing. And finally on the don't bother list is the elusive tone enhancer. These can come in the form of weighted screws, metal plates attached to elastic bands, plugs that go into your neck. Avoid all of this stuff like the plague. If it makes any difference at all, it would be so minute as to make it absolutely redundant, particularly as a beginner. If you need any more proof, ask yourself the question, did any of the greats use tone enhancers? Of course not. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that roundup of sax gear and you feel a bit more confident that you've got everything you need to really dive into the saxophone. Remember, if you've got questions from this video or you're looking for links to any of the products mentioned, I've put all of that in the description down below. And if you're looking for a course that will teach you every note on the saxophone, how to get a great sound, how to read sheet music and how to play beautiful melodies, check out the Sax Tuition Beginner Series. It's got 12 lesson videos, over 200 demo tracks and a 68 page ebook that will help you conquer the saxophone from scratch. As I mentioned at the top of this video, you can watch lesson one right here on YouTube, up there. Or if you're ready to dive in and get the complete course, head on over to saxtuition.com or use the link below. Well, thanks again for watching guys. Make sure to click like on this video if you found it useful and subscribe to the Sax Tuition YouTube channel for more great saxophone content. And I'll see you all again soon.